Okay. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for being here today. Thank you for providing coverage to this very, very important story. Today, we're here to talk about firefighters and the fact and the very startling fact that firefighters get cancer at a much higher rate and at a much younger age than the average population. And why does that happen? It happened as a direct result of their work. And too many times, their, low, their insurance is not able to cover all of the costs associated with having to treat the cancer that they have unfortunately gotten as a result of the fact that every single day, without ha asking any questions, they risk their lives in order to keep the rest of us safe. We now know that two out of every three firefighters will get cancer at some point in their career. That is a startling, startling number. And while there are things that are being done and technology that's being done to ensure that a generation from now those numbers will go down, what we know right now and what you'll hear from some folks today is that there are still too many firefighters that are dealing not just with the medical complications of having to deal or having to have cancer, but with the financial complications. And so what we're talking about today is a bill that we have both in the Senate, and today I'm proud to say that it passed out of its second committee of reference unanimously. It will soon be heard, um, hopefully, by the full appropriations committee. I'm grateful Senator Bradley is here. Um, we have a bill that will seek to end that. We have a bill that will make it so that local governments or, or the, the local provider of the insurance of, uh, of firefighters, if they are, if the firefighter is able to show that um, he, has been, he or she has been on the force for five years, if they get cancer as a result of that service, then their local employer will pick up the costs associated, not just with the treatment of the cancer, but with any out-of-pocket expenses that exist. We know that while this won't cure the physical ailments that the firefighter is going through, and it certainly won't bring back a loved one who has been lost, it will certainly go a long way to make sure that in a time of need, a firefighter won't have to be worrying about financial obligations as a result of their selfless acts of service every day. I'm incredibly pleased that today we are joined by our own chief financial officer, Jimmy Patronis, who has made this one of his top legislative priorities. And at this time, I'd like to ask um, Chief Patronis to join us. You know, it's, a, it's an honor to be here. This is going on 13 years that we've got a chance to serve together. So, and, and Senator Flores never ceases to amaze me. She continues to find innovative ways to make life for Floridians a little bit better every single legislative session. And you know what? You deserve a round of applause. Oh, As I was telling my friends here behind me, you know, it's, it's fantastic to be the CFO of the state of Florida and be the state fire marshal. But here's the reality. I can't move the needle on this issue without support from our legislature. And to have Senator Hooper here having a fantastic bill sponsor like Senator Flores and having our own appropriations chairman here, Senator Bradley, those are all fantastic shows, uh, signs of commitment and examples of where this legislation could ultimately be within 60 days, hopefully landing on uh, Governor DeSantis' desk. Our men and women that, that don the uniform 24-7, 365, create the communities we get to enjoy. But I'm gonna tell you a statistic that is totally unacceptable. 70% of the deaths that occur in the line of duty are cancer related. Think about that a minute. What type of recruitment tool is that to go into the profession to have 70% of the deaths that occurred are cancer related? So enough is enough, we've gotta change the number. 15% of these men and women that enter into this profession have a higher probability of collecting can can uh, contracting cancer than, than you or I. Again, another number that is unacceptable. We'll continue moving forward with our decontamination buckets. We partner with the University of Miami, great program, but again, 
I'm, I'm all about doing everything we can to fix the here and the now. We've got a, a, a very special time right now. It's called the Legislative Session of Florida. We've got 60 days to move the needle, to get this ball across the goal line. But you can't do it without incredible sponsors like our senator, uh, having the bill up in, in her committee today and seeing the room packed, standing room only. Uh, it's emotional, um, but I'm going to, uh, I have a real honor to introduce who is to me the motivation of this legislation. Um, about a year ago, year and a half ago, I'm new on the job. I don't know what this means to be the state's fire marshal, but what I've learned is there's a lot of incredible men and women that, that make up our communities. My little boys want to be, they want to be firemen one day. No offense to the rest of the first responders out there, but, but it's a little, they're a little biased. But I um, um, was down at South Manatee Fire District, and I got to meet a guy by the name of Dame, Dwayne McKeever. And uh, Dwayne's a little larger than life, uh, you know, a uh, little shy, um, you know, didn't, uh, didn't quite know what I was getting into when I was having dinner that night. One thing led to another as uh, the conversation at the table started to turn about our families and what we do, Dwayne starts to share with me his testimony of dealing with cancer. The fact that he's got a family, he's got a profession that he loves, and he's got a disease that will not leave him alone. The fact that Dwayne has to um, travel to Moffitt, which is a world-class facility, but travel to Moffitt for regular treatments and visits and doctor's appointments not only does it take time away from his family, it takes time away from the profession that he loves. All of that has an incredibly heavy impact on his ability to take care of his family, to pay his bills, to lead a normal life, and you know, the hazards of the profession have created complexities in how he moves forward day after day after day. So Dwayne's my hero. Dwayne comes up out of here, uh, out of Sarasota to come up and give testimony to help put a face on this issue. Um, and uh, look, it's, uh, he's gonna win it, he's gonna beat it. Uh, we've, got, we've got the technology, we've got the skills, we've got the profession. You know what, now all he needs is the coverage and peace of mind because these men and women are there for us 24-7, 365. It's time for us to show that we're there for them. Dwayne, come on up. Thank you, CFO Patronus, Senator Flores, Senator Hooper. Thank you each uh, and every other senator that's uh, involved in this bill. Um, it's very dear to me to get this through the uh, Senate into the House. Uh, there's a lot of people that would like to be here. Um, I'm here representing that individual and multiple individuals throughout the state of Florida. Um, it's a very large financial burden. Uh, it causes you a lot of stress uh, within your life. Um, my coverage, pretty good on my insurance, but uh, they don't pay for everything. Uh, as everyone knows, it's insurance. It, it is what it is. Um, but been turned into collections a couple times on financial bills. Um, I'm not one of those that have a bad, bad credit at all. I'm very, you know, substantial on very, uh, how I take care of my monies. Um, but it caused you a lot of stress, and I'm just here to represent each and every one of these people. Uh, I believe on Thursday, we're gonna be out here uh, having the boots on the steps. Also, um, there's a couple other individuals to share their stories about their loved ones. Uh, it's very dear to them. Um, even though I have the cancer, um, it causes a lot of stress on your significant others. Um, it really does, and I just want to uh, thank each and everybody, I, as much as I can do. Um, just please look at, look at us and uh, think, hey, you know, can you try to get this bill passed for us? And I, I do believe we have the right people in the right spots this year. And uh, I want to thank each and every one of you very dear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Senator much. Flores, thank you. Thank you very much. We, we've heard really just gut-wrenching testimony from both survivors and, and um, folks who unfortunately have had family who have passed away. Um, before we move forward, I, I, we can't do this, uh, it's not a unicameral legislature, so we can't do this without our good friends in the House. And I want to first start with thanking Representative Woolhite, who has taken this bill on in the House. And so thank you very much for that. We 
have several other representatives who are here, Representative Juan Fernandez Bar King, Representative Vance Lupus, Representative Heather Fitzenhagen, Representative Michael Greco. Um, what this shows you is, uh, did I miss anyone? Oh, oh, goodness, we have the leader. We have leader, leader Keon McGee being here. Um, so thank you, Leader McGee, for being here, Representative Anna Maria Rodriguez for being here. What does this show you? What this shows you is that in a time when it seems like um, neither party can get along, what this shows you that this is an issue that has strong bipartisan support and very broad support. Um, the number of co-sponsors that we have continues to grow every day because isn't this, this isn't just something that a few people support. It's something that lots of people support. And it's not just something that the state of Florida is seeking this out to be the, the new person on the block to do this. The fact is that Florida is one of the last ones to get to this. 44 other states have some sort of either cancer coverage for firefighters, a cancer presumption. 44 other states have said that they wanna make sure that they do whatever possible to make sure that when their first responders, their firefighters get cancer, that the financial burden does not fall solely upon them individually or upon their families. It's long time that Florida joined this fight. It's long time that we do the right thing. And I do want to introduce now um, one more person, a friend of mine, Claudine Bozo from the Miami-Dade Fire Department. Um, she's here to talk about her story as well. Unfortunately, um, you'll see you know, another young person who has gotten cancer, a very aggressive form of cancer in, um, in this time. And it's as a direct result of their job. And, and this is a job that, you know, they want to do, right? Firefighters are passionate about the work that they do. They don't want to be sitting home. They don't want to be sick and not be able to help. So there's that extra layer as well. And so you'll hear today um, from Claudine, not just about her story, but about some of the other folks that she's been um, wanting to work with and help as well. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Claudine Buzzo. Um, I worked for Miami-Dade Fire Rescue for 17 years. Two years ago, I was um, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Uh, the irony of all this is pancreatic cancer is not on this bill, but I need to be here to fight for every single firefighter in this state, not just my membership, but every firefighter that has cancer. When we go to work, we don't ask questions. We don't say, are we gonna get cancer? Somebody said to me, if you had to do it all over again, would you? Yes, I would. My career is over. I am stuck behind a desk. That is my reality. But I am here to fight for every single person in this state that is not covered. We have, if we go and we break an ankle or we break an elbow, we're covered. They send us to the doctor, they put a cast on it. We, this is the same thing. This is no different. This is an injury, an on-the-job injury. And all the people standing behind me, I cannot thank enough for taking this on because it is that important. We are dying at a rapid rate. Two out of three firefighters get cancer. And I can guarantee you people that are going to sign up for this job, they're still gonna sign up and they're still gonna do the job, but we need to protect them. Because if, if, if the senators and the representatives don't help us in this, then who will? This is not a Republican or a Democrat issue. This is a human issue. And that's all I wanted to say. And I thank everybody for being here. And I thank you for the attention that this is getting. Thank you very much. Again, before we open it up for questions, um, I want to thank again so much CFO Patronas for being here and for being so vocal about this issue. Um, it very much helps when you have a statewide elected official that has stood by and said this is something that we want to support. I want to thank Representative Woolhite and his colleagues who are here for continuing to push this bill forward. Uh, we feel we feel confident, we feel good that this bill will, will be continue to be heard in the Senate and will um, be passed by the full Senate and we will continue to work with our House colleagues to make sure that the same result can be heard on that side. And I want to take a moment and recognize um, Commissioner McKay, who's, uh, who's here from 
I'm from Palm Beach County. The reason why I am, she didn't know I was going to do that, um, is because one of the criticisms sometimes that we've heard is that this might be too costly for local governments, right? It might be just too costly to have this extra benefit. Palm Beach County recently um, said that's, that's not the case. And Palm Beach County has recently made the exact same benefits that are available in this bill available to all of their county firefighters. So what does that show you? I mean, that's a huge round of applause. What, what that shows you is that where there's a will, there's a way that there can be funding found in order to provide this benefit and that there are local governments that are willing to step up and to say this is something that is important to us. What we want to make sure is that every firefighter across the entire state of Florida has that same benefit. Um, as, as was mentioned, I think very eloquently, look, if you get hurt on the job, you twist your ankle, no questions asked, you're not going to pay anything out of pocket for that, right? What happens with cancer is that because you can't show that it happened as a result of one event, then these men and women have nowhere to go to but to sometimes have to fall on the charity of their own colleagues to help them pay for these bills. That is the last thing that we should be, that's the last message that we should be sending to our first responders. We have to show them that they've got our back all day, every day. We've got to show them that in their time of need that we have their back as well. And so again, I want to thank you. I want to thank everyone so much for being here. It's an incredible testament to the support that this bill has. And if there are any questions, um, I'd be happy. And I know the CFO and others would be happy to answer them as well. OK, if there are no questions, then thank you all for being here. We appreciate it very, very much.